Well, welcome back. In this video, I just finished tidying up a few things before starting this engine for the very first time. So I didn't want to choke on the handlebars, so what I decided to do was cut away the choke mechanism from the stock unit, and this is what it looks like. And then what I wanted to do is find a spot somewhere on the engine that I could mount it. So funnily enough, right on the end of the carby there seems to be a great spot. Uh, there's a little notch. I just had to uh, grind down to create a bit, bit of a flat for it. And that hole you can see there was just perfect. And uh, what I did is tapped it out. And ultimately that's the mounting for this um, choke unit. So I screwed in, tested it all. And uh, you know, the fit there is great. And I think it's in a good location uh, and provides easy access. So once I got that far, I used the original choke cable, uh, installed it on that end. And then obviously I rerouted it and I had to shorten it quite a bit. So in the lathe, I just turned down a bit of brass that I had uh, that was going to fit on the choke end, put the cable in, silver solder, and um, quick clean up with the file uh, and wire brush. And then all I did was just ground it off and that's going nowhere. That's a perfect end. So very happy with that. So there it is. You can see the choke works perfectly so there was a few more things I wanted to do before starting this engine so I uh, put the clutch lever in and I also set up the throttle cable and that works well um, and once I got those two things done I wanted to do a check on the valve clearances now it is worth checking all of these sort of things you just never know what you're going to find so this head was one I imported uh, when you check these you need to crank the engine over using those flats with a with a spanner and what you do is you get the cam so the lobe is pointing up like this one and you do this on each of them the uh, exhaust valve clearances need to be between six and eight thou and the inlet valves need to be between four and six so just checking this one here and it's right in the middle of the spec at seven thou so uh, that is perfect um, once I got that one done, I just progressively checked all the other valves and it was lucky I did because by the time I got to piston number four, uh, I found that the inlet side had a gap of 13 thou and the exhaust side was no gap, it was actually partially open. And measuring the shims, I, I had to remove them. Um, I found that they were somehow swapped. So either I'd made a mistake or they were shipped over the wrong way around, but swapped them over and uh, it was perfect. Now you notice I had to take the um, caps off uh, to lift that. If There is a special tool from Yamaha that you can actually take those shims out without doing that but I don't have the tool and it's only a little bit more work. So that's the, uh, the valves all set up. What I did next was just install the exhaust and I must say I'm very glad that I built these earlier because uh, they were quite a bit of work and uh, doing it this way with it all painted you just know it's going to fit and there's no problem so uh, I'm going to start this with no mufflers uh, just for the hell of it and I think it's going to sound better that way so um, just leaving them open now you notice here the oil filter is going in and that uh, oil cooler line on that left hand side I'm leaving off because I want to check that I've actually got oil flow through the pump now, one of the other checks I'm doing is the oil level sensor uh, is just um, earthed when it's empty or low. And you can see as it goes up, I lose uh, conduct connectivity there and it's just saying it's open circuit, which is perfect. Right, we're getting very close now. So I've got the ignition on. I'm just shorting this out through um, the start circuit and I'm just checking if I've got spark which I do, which is great. Once I had spark, I just also checked that I had oil flow um, and that looks great as well. So I just uh, connect that back on. And the final check I wanted to do was just check that I had compression. Uh, so this is just to be absolutely sure there were no problems with the rings or valves and it was sealing well. So I checked all of them. They're all about the same, uh, 150 to 160, which is great. So at this point, I've done all my checks and we are about to, ready to start this old girl for the first time. So I'm just putting fuel in here and um, 
you know, there's a reasonable amount goes in when you start these up. It's probably about half a litre. You can see the air bubbles going through. And I'll put a rag under there just as a bit of insurance. Well, there's a fuel going in. And look, at this stage, I think I've done everything I possibly can to get this right. And uh, let's see, we're about to start this for the very first time. So there's no reason why this shouldn't start. Oh, hang on, did I turn it off? Is the lights on there? I turned it off. Because I had this in my hand. Oh, for Pete's sake, it would run. So there you go, it started up first pot, which was incredible. And uh, one thing I, I wasn't 100% sure of was how it would go with the jets, because I'd made so many mods with this, and you know, idle's pretty good. It is running a bit rich, and I've got a bit of fine tuning to do, but the engine sounds awesome. There's no rattle. Uh, it starts first pot, and um, I just need to, yeah, do a bit, bit of messing about to get it right. Um, there's these air filters going on, so I'm going to go with K&N's. Uh, AirPods, I think they look pretty good and they should perform well. And uh, from here, the engine is done now, and I'm going to start working on the electrics uh, to the next level. So, in the next video, what I'll do is I will start working on the speedo and get that working. So, just I'll do one more start up. I don't really like the sound with these baffles in, so I've taken the baffles out of the mufflers. I'll restart it, and I think that sounds pretty good. Stay tuned.